Hello and welcome back to yet another GCSE revision video. Now guys, I put this video together on an inspector calls because lots of you guys have requested this on this channel, okay? So a bunch of you guys have inspector calls as your set text and lots of you guys find these videos quite useful. So I had a think about an inspector calls and I had a think in terms of my own experiences with my students, be it the, my students who are doing AQA GCSEs, okay, with an inspector calls being their set text or Edexcel, IGCSE, those are my students who are also part of my inspector calls masterclasses, okay, when I did my literature weeks. And one of the things that I found, especially based on lots of their questions, is lots of them have said, okay, miss, I'm stuck at a grade three, grade four. Miss, what does it take to do really well in inspector calls with these exams and secure those top tier marks, get a grade seven, grade eight, and grade nine. And I thought about past essays I've looked at, past graded essays, and even essays which are available online from AQA, Edexcel, and so on, and looked at the differences between the essays that did really well, that got those top marks, versus the essays that kind of struggled, okay? The essays that maybe sometimes failed or even got grades four and grade five. Now, one of the things that I found, and this is a trend, is lots of students work really hard in explaining when they're given a question, right? They've got an exam question. They've got a question related to one of the characters or one of the themes. They're really, most students I find are really, really good at explaining what happens in inspector calls. Also, lots of students are pretty good at remembering some quotations. However, when it comes to analyzing, okay, analysis, which is where the bulk of your marks reside, Lots of students engage with the character. They say, okay, this is what shows me about Mr. Berling, Sheila. This is what it shows me about the theme of class and so on. However, in terms of getting to the deeper layers of analysis, they literally miss out three key words, which I call the golden trio, which I found consistently examiners tend to award really, really top marks for, okay? And what I want to show you guys within this lesson is getting that grade seven, eight, and nine and doing super well in inspector calls boils down to your analysis and it boils down to using these three keywords that Priestley wants to convey as part of his message. He wants to first criticize, but also give his audience and of course people who are thinking about the play's message a solution, okay? So within this lesson, guys, I want to go over with you guys the three golden trio of words that if you include in all your inspector calls analysis, okay, when you're analyzing, regardless of the characters, okay, if you're analyzing Mr. Burling, Mrs. Burling, Sheila, Gerald, Eric, so on, but also if you're analyzing the themes, these key words must be in any of your essays if you are trying to access your top marks, okay? Accessing grades seven, eight, and nine is actually not as difficult as you think because as long as you understand the meaning of these words and how to include them in your essays, you're now already setting your essay aside from all the other essays that kind of struggle. Students then start seeing twos and threes. You're now finding yourself in grade seven, eight, and nine territory, okay? So guys, what I want to do is to show you guys the golden trio, I believe, of the words that when examiners see this in your essays, when your teachers see this in your essays, they literally can see that you're cut into the heart of what Priestley's message is. And remember that analysis is to do with what the author's message is. Word number one, which weirdly enough, tends to go missing in student essays, especially the students that get twos, threes, fours, and fives, is this word, capitalism. Remember that Priestley wrote this play to criticize the Edwardian capitalist system. If you're not sure what capitalism means or capitalist means, it's really simple. Capitalism, firstly, let's quickly go over the meaning, okay? And then how you can analyze it, how you can include it in any and all of your essays and inspector calls, okay? Remember that capitalism is a very simple concept. It's basically the idea of making money, which is good, okay? So countries which are run under a capitalist system, governments which have a capitalist system, believe that making money is good, and your money is what is called your private property. When you make money, you make a bunch of money or you make little money, whatever you have in your bank, that's your own private property and up to you to do what you want to do with it, okay? And the most important thing as part of a 
capitalist system is that the government, okay, the people that run the country, they have no say in how you spend it, okay? So everything in a capitalist system is for sale. Everything is all about you paying for it, including stuff like education, okay? So private school is not a thing because everyone pays for education. Things like healthcare, okay? So for example, if you think about countries like America, healthcare is not free, they don't have an NHS, and even housing, okay? You've got to pay your rent, you've got to pay for your lifestyle. Everything is for sale. And the people that make money off those things and of course off different industries beyond that, they get to keep those profits, okay? And making money is good. Greed is good, okay? If any of you guys know of a film called Wall Street, which was released in 1980, they have a key word which really sums up capitalism. Greed is good, okay? And businesses, it's up to businesses to pay people what they want, okay? The whole driving idea behind capitalism is this phrase, big business, small government. The government has very little say over what businesses do as long as the business is legal, okay? Now, remember that Inspector Calls is set in 1912. This is the Edwardian era. This was a time where if you were poor, you could barely get an education, okay? Because most schools were not free and the schools that were free, the very few schools that were free, really offered very basic education. This was also a time where there wasn't an NHS service. If you got sick, you had to pay for your care. You had to pay doctors to help you. And also this was a time where if you were homeless, there was no such thing as social housing, okay? Literally, if you're homeless, it's up to you to figure things out for yourself. And likewise, if you were very rich or if you're upper middle class like the Burlings, they had um, no obligation or duty to look after you, okay? The government wouldn't tell someone like Mr. Burling, hey, your business is making all of this money. Please pay your workers a nice minimum wage. Please, you know, um, pay more taxes so that we can make school free for poor people, okay? So priestly wanted to criticize this, to say, look at the tragedy of people like Eva Smith and John Smith, okay? Because this is what the inspector called says at the end. Look at how the lives turn out. They actually would have survived and maybe thrived had we shifted this capitalist system. It's terrible. He is criticizing it. And that's what you need to include in any analysis based on either any of the characters, including Eva Smith or the themes. That's the first golden word. You need to make sure any of your inspector calls essays uses the word capitalism or capitalist Edwardian system. The second key word, okay, the second golden word in this golden trio is socialism, okay? This is actually Priestley's solution to the capitalist problem that he saw, okay? And Priestley himself was a socialist, okay? So he was trying to use this play to champion socialism. What is socialism, okay? So of course you need to mention this in any of your essay. Socialism is to some degree the other side of capitalism. The direct opposite of capitalism is not socialism, it's communism, okay? But socialism is a softer version of this. And simply what socialism means is that it's the idea that countries must tax people, okay? So governments and countries must tax people as well as businesses more, okay? So government people and businesses need to pay more tax so that when the government collects this tax, they can pay for these basic services and make it free, okay? So if we all pay more taxes, if someone like Mr. Belling's running a really nice and successful business, they're making lots of money, well, they need to be taxed more, the more money they earn, so that the government can take some of that money and pay for more schools to be built, which give people free education, free healthcare, like the NHS, which is, um, you know, a public service in the UK, okay? You can get free healthcare and also stuff like housing, like social housing, okay? This is available because the UK is more of a socialist system, okay? So it's based on the idea that countries must tax people more so that basic services can be free. And also when it comes to businesses, businesses like Mr. Burling's business, okay? These businesses should also pay the workers a minimum wage and the government should keep an eye on what businesses are paying the workers, okay? And if they don't pay them a minimum wage, right? Something that they can live on, actually the government is gonna make this business get in trouble, okay? And the idea of socialism, which is what Priestley deeply believed in, okay? He wanted England to become more of a socialist state, okay? This idea is summed up in this following phrase, big government, okay, so the government is larger, it has more of a direct say on what we do with our money, 
and small business. Okay, so you remember guys, if you're talking about capitalism, capitalism is simply big business, small government, whilst socialism is big government, small business. And of course, remember that the message of an inspector called is it's essential for England as a whole and the government as a whole to switch towards a more socialist system so that people like Mr. Burling do not abuse their power over Eva Smith. And also people who are really wealthy, like Gerald Croft, right, his upper class aristocracy, he should also have a duty to pay more in taxes in order to help people like Eva Smith. You know, if they're homeless, they have free housing. If they're sick, they get access to some kind of free medical care. That is a second key word that needs to be in any essay that you write for an inspector calls, regardless of uh, character, regardless of theme. The third key word, which literally is actually criminal that more students are not told about this key word, okay? Or it's usually just associated with one theme. If you don't get a question on the theme of gender, you don't need to bother using it. This is a grade nine word, okay? And you need to include it and incorporate it because it runs through an inspector calls. And this word is patriarchy, okay? A patriarchal society. What does patriarchy mean? Patriarchy simply means a society that is ruled by men, okay? So it comes from the Latin word pater, P-A-T-E-R, which means father, okay? Mater, which is a Latin word, means mother, but I'm not gonna get too technical. Patriarchy simply means a society um, ruled by men. And as a result, okay, in a patriarchal society, women have few rights as they are inferior to men who are superior, okay? And also patriarchy simply means that women in a very strictly patriarchal society, they are seen more so as possessions, okay? For example, in some societies, when a man marries a woman, he pays dowry to the father, almost like an exchange of goods, okay? That's a very extreme example, but that happens in some societies, okay? So women are seen as possessions with very few rights, and they also are seen as people who should just be homemakers, they shouldn't work, they shouldn't get jobs, they should just be in the home, cooking in the kitchen, looking after kids, or should they also get equal pay? They shouldn't be working, and if they work, they're probably not gonna be that great at work, so they shouldn't get equal pay. This is what is called patriarchy. Remember that Eva Smith does not get a decent wage, and Mr. Berlin does not believe in giving her a decent wage, okay? Remember that Priestley was a feminist. This play has a very strong feminist message that underpins it. Also remember that Sheila Berlin, right, she's not an obvious victim, Eva Smith is the most obvious victim, but think about how Sheila Belling is mistreated by Gerald Croft and she still needs to marry this man who basically ghosted her over the previous summer, okay? This is also still Priestley's way of criticizing the mistreatment of women, even upper middle class women like Sheila, okay? It's not something that's only restricted to poor working class women. And of course, when you're talking about patriarchy and especially socialism, okay? So Priestley was being very critical of patriarchy and he's trying to promote socialism and equality of gender. Make the point in any of your Inspector Calls essays that Priestley explores the terrible injustices of a capitalist patriarchal society, which was the Edwardian era. So guys, remember, literally, to secure really amazing marks in Inspector Calls and indeed any English essay, it relies on your analysis. And analysis means you are unpacking the ideas that run behind this play. And part of that is you using this golden trio of words, capitalism, socialism, as well as patriarchy, okay? When you do that, not only your teachers will be impressed, but also guys, you're gonna start seeing your grades shifting, okay? So try your best to start incorporating this into your language and your analysis, okay? So guys, thank you so much for listening and I hope you found this useful.